Okay, so this is just graphing radicals continued, but it has um, all of the extra pieces. So we're just going to do one example. Uh, so we have to sketch the graph. and find, and this is where it's a long list. So we have to find the domain and range. The x and y intercept. The intervals where we're increasing and decreasing. And they're always going to say open intervals, so we don't have to worry. We know it's always going to be parentheses. So open intervals of increasing and decreasing. And then finally, the um, open intervals of where your graph is negative and or positive. So you only have three of these to do for homework, um, but they're long problems, okay, because you have to do so many things for each one. So we have to be able to graph it, which that's the easy part, and the domain and range is actually pretty simple as well. X and Y intercepts sometimes are easy, sometimes not. Intervals of increasing and decreasing. So when we do the increasing and decreasing, it's only going to be one of these, not both. So when you do increasing, you'll have an answer, but then decreasing will be never, or vice versa. Maybe it will be never increasing, always decreasing. But you should never have two answers for increasing and decreasing. And then the negative and positive for this right here, so this one is, it always splits at the x-intercept. So we're going to write that down here, but when we do the notes, we'll write that again or the steps. So this will always split at the x-intercept. <coughs> so we're just going to say that for this part for right now so that when we actually do the problem we can talk about it and go right back up to it. Okay. Alright, so let's do the pro so the actual function now. Okay, so there's our equation. So step one, we want to put it into standard form. Okay, so we want to put it into the form where we can find the vertex easy, the stretch easy. Meaning, um, if there's a straggler number, right, we want to move it over to the y, and f of x is the same as our y. Um, and then if we don't have one, we know then it would just be 0. Okay, so that's going to be our first step. So for us, then, do I move the 3 over, or am I going to move the 2 over? Like, which one is the straggler number, which one's the stretch? Okay, so let's see here, um, Travis, which ones are a stretch, the 2 or the negative 3? Negative 3, so that means I need to move the 2 over. So I'm going to subtract 2 to the other side, and I'm going to rewrite f of x as y. So that will be y, and then I'm subtracting the 2, and then I still have negative 3, and then x plus 4. Okay. So we already know how to graph, so we're going to graph this together. So we're going to put it into standard form. So to graph it, we're going to find our vertex. And for graphing, we need to have three points plotted, the vertex and two other points. And one of those other points, so we're just going to use our stretch to do that.
Okay, so um, for our vertex equia, is it 4 or negative 4? 2 or negative 2? Okay, good. So. Okay, and then Camden, what's our stretch? So how do I use my stretch now to find another point? So from here, I'm going to do what? <coughs> so up three? How, am I go how come I'm going up three? OK, <laughs> so down three over one. OK, so one, two, three, one. OK, so I went down three over one. Can I do that again to find another point? No, only for lines, right? Stretches, we can only use them once. So then now I'm, I need one more point, so I need to pick an x value. And when I pick an x value, I need to make sure that I know the square root of whatever number I'm picking, right? So I need to figure out what number can I put in here so that when I add 4 to it, I know the square root of that number. So I can do guess and check. So if I'm pretty good with numbers, I would just do guess and check. If I'm not, then I can count from here. And I can count over 1, which found me my first point, and then 4, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I count over 4, it looks to me, what would I use for my x? I could use 0. Okay. Is, that's not the only number that would work, right? There could be all kinds of numbers I use, right? I could use 5, right? Because if I use 5, 5 plus 4 is 9. I know the square root of that. Okay. So there's all kinds of numbers I could pick. So we're going to use 0. So all I'm doing is going back to my original graph here, and I'm going to replace x with 0. So this will be 2 minus 3, and then the square root of 0 plus 4, which is just 4. Okay. And then, Cameron, what's the square root of 4? And then what is 3 times 2? Okay, good. And then 2 minus 6. Okay. So then I'm going to go over 0 and then down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then connect. So from my vertex through the dots, right? I don't want to go the reverse way. I want to start at my vertex and then go through the dots. So start at my vertex and then through the dots. And then this should be a negative parabola, right? How come it's a negative parabola? It has a negative stretch, right? So that means it reflects across the x-axis. So there's my graph. That's the part we already know how to do. So now we have to do the new stuff, right? We have to do domain and range. So domain is left to right. So where does the graph start on the left? Where does it stop on the right? And then the range, bottom to top. How low does it go? How high does it go? And so I'm going to squeeze it in over here. I'm going to do D and R because I don't need a lot of room for writing that. Okay, so Sal, you're going to help me with this one. Okay. The domain. Okay, so where does the graph start on the left? At what number? Negative 4. Where does it stop on the right? Okay, good job. So it starts at negative 4, and it never stops. And then it's equal, right, at negative 4, but can't equal infinity. Okay, good. Okay, and then now let's do our range. All right, so John, this John here, you're going to help me with the range, okay? So range is bottom to top. So it's negative infinity because it's going down forever. And then how high does it go? It stops at 2. Good job. Okay, so there's the domain and range. So now we have to do the x and y intercepts. OK, 
Okay, so for our x and y intercept, we let y equal zero, and we also let x equal zero. But sometimes you can do a little shortcut and just look at your graph. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't work, okay? And that's just based on if it crosses at a whole number or not. So if I look to see, okay, across my x-axis, so this is my x-axis, so my x-intercept, I can't tell exactly where it is. It's somewhere between negative three and negative four. But if I look on my y-axis, I can tell exactly where it is, right? There's my y-intercept. So sometimes we can do a little shortcut and just read it off the graph. And sometimes we can do both of them, but sometimes not. So if I look here, it's like, oh, that's pretty easy. There's my y-intercept. So I know my y-intercept, I can just look at my graph. It's right there, okay? So for my y-intercept, that one, oops, started to write x. So y-intercept, that one's easy. That's at 1, 2, 3, 4, at 0, negative 4, right? But my x-intercept is going to be a little bit tougher because I can't tell exactly where it's at. It's somewhere between negative 3 and negative 4. And I can't just say, eh, negative 3.5. Okay? I'm not allowed to do that. If I can't figure it out and I write that down, I'll at least give you a little bit of credit because you knew where it was. You just couldn't find it exactly, which is fine. Okay, so that if you were like, eh, that seems like I don't want to do that much work, then you can get partial credit by estimating, okay? All right, so for our x-intercept, I let y equal zero, okay? So I'm going to go to my original, or I'm going to actually go to this part right here and replace y with zero. So from here, okay, I'm going to replace y with zero, so zero minus two, and then negative three square root of x plus four. So, so that's what I did, right? From there, and then I changed y for 0. And then now we're going to solve this. So this is practicing our solving equations. So we've got 0 minus 2. That part's easy. That's negative 2. Okay, so now we worked on solving equations, I don't know, a couple a week ago before Thanksgiving break. So let's see what we remember. Okay, so Valerie, you're up. So I have to get rid of everything with the x. So how am I going to get rid of the plus 4? Eventually, not right away, but how would I get rid of adding 4? So I would subtract it. Okay, good. How do I get rid of a square root? We square it. How do I get rid of when I multiply by negative 3? Divide. We divide. Okay, good. So those are all my steps. Now let's do it in the right order. So what do I have to do first? Do you remember? Divide. Divide. Good job. Right? We do everything outside of the square root first. So we're going to divide by negative 3. So everything outside of the square root has to go away first. And so in this case, we have to divide by negative 3. So the two negatives here cancel. I can't actually divide that. And so then now, you said to get rid of the plus 4, I have to subtract it. To get rid of the square root, I have to square it. So what do I do next? We square it. Good job. <coughs> and then over here, that's just x plus 4. And so when I square a fraction, I just square it separately, right? I'll do 2 times 2, 3 times 3. So 2 times 2, 3 times 3. And then finally, my last step, I have to subtract 4. Okay. And so I'm going to do that on this side over here. So 4 over 9 minus 4 over 1. And then I have to get a common denominator, right, when I subtract fractions. So I would multiply by 9. 4 times 9 is 36 all over 9. And then, what is that, negative 32? Is that right? Did I do that right? Okay, thank you. So there's a fun little x-intercept. And you're going to get those occasionally, okay? But we still need to be able to do that. 
So if the fractions are giving us grief and we just write it as 4 ninths minus 4, that's okay, right? If we don't want to deal with having to add or subtract fractions because these problems are so long anyways, like that's okay. Okay, so we are almost done. Okay, so it doesn't feel like it, but we are. Okay, so I'm going to have to um, look back up to the top here, so let me zoom out. I know it's itty bitty, but we want to be able to see it, all this other part right here. So now for our x-intercepts, y-intercepts, that's the hardest part probably. Graphing's not bad, x-intercepts, y-intercepts can be brutal. Um, domain and range is easy, right? Reading the graph left to right, bottom to top. The intervals of increasing, decreasing, also a piece of cake. Okay, so now we're going to do that next. So for increasing, decreasing, it can only be one or the other, right? Okay, so that may not make a lot of sense there, but what I'm trying to say is when we do an increasing interval or a decreasing interval, it should only be one of them. Like we should only be increasing or we should only be decreasing. <coughs> and then the other one we just say never on. So it, there should never be like an answer for increasing and also an answer for decreasing. Okay, so I'm not sure if that makes sense, but that's what I'm trying to say there on that step. Okay, so Haley for this one right here, so we go from left to right. So from left to right, am I increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. I'm decreasing, okay? So we always go from left to right. And so she told us we're decreasing, okay? So I'm like running out of room here, so I'm gonna scoosh to the bottom. So we are decreasing, okay? this is scratch work over here, so I'm going to just put kind of a line there so I remember that that's really not part of my answers. So decreasing only, so it's going to be the same as the domain, right? Decreasing only, same as domain, but we use open intervals. So we're decreasing from negative 4 to infinity, but the directions say to use open intervals. So parentheses, right? So this is the same as the domain. And then increasing will be never, right? Because there should only be an answer for one, not the other. So when I do this, we're just looking at the domain, but we're not using um, a closed interval, we're using open interval. Okay. All right, last one here. So last step, so I know I'm going up and down here. Open interval of negative to positive. Ethan and Aquia, can you guys see that or is that too small? Yeah. It's okay. All right. Okay, so above is positive, below is negative. So what I mean by that, I mean when am I above the x-axis, when am I below the x-axis? And it's always at the x-intercept where we split it. So if I go right here, right, if I go to my x-intercept, when I am above the x-axis, that's when my graph is positive. So everywhere above is when I'm positive, so it splits at the x-intercept. And everywhere below is when I'm negative. So at the x-intercept, which is right here, above is positive, below is negative. Now, it's possible that you won't have an x-intercept, right? Because what if you have a graph that does something like this, right? You wouldn't have an x-intercept, so then it would be positive everywhere. So it's possible you're not going to have both. But most of the time, you would just split it at the x-intercept. OK, 
Okay, so when I do my positive, so I'm going to do it below here, so I have enough room. Okay, so positive, negative. So positive is when I'm above, negative is when I'm below. So from left to right, so this dot is at negative 4, right? So I'm at negative 4 on the x-axis. Oh wait, I said open interval, sorry. Okay, so I, in the directions I said open interval. I can't remember if the homework directions say open interval or not, so we'll, I'll check that here in a second. So negative 4, and then it splits at the x-intercept. So my x-intercept, I have to look, is down here, right? So here's my x-intercept, that's where it splits. So from negative 4 to negative 32 over 9. And then my negative starts where I left off, and I left off at the x-intercept, which is negative 32 over 9. And then I have to look, when does it stop? Okay. So when does it stop? Never. So I'm going to not use the word never, I'm going to use <laughs> infinity. <laughs> okay. And there we go. Okay? And that, my friends.